Thanks for coming out. Uh, as always, uh, you'll notice I'm wearing my Curing Kids Cancer t-shirt again uh, today for the, or for the first time this year at a press conference. Uh, this is the game that I love each and every year, being able to uh, highlight this amazing uh, group. September is National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, for 10 years now, our athletic department uh, has been proud to support Curing Kids Cancer. Our players have done a lot of community service activities with them since I've been the head football coach here at Carolina. Uh, we'll be wearing helmet stickers this week to uh, bring attention to this amazing cause. You see our T-shirt, wristband that I have uh, today as well. It's uh, Curing Kids Cancer is a nonprofit that was founded by the Owen family, a great group of Gamecocks who I've had the honor of getting to know. Uh, the last few years since I became the head football coach here, they lost their son Killian to leukemia in 2003. Uh, such an awful, heartbreaking story that they've shared with our football team before. But since that tragic loss, they've dedicated their lives to raising money for pediatric cancer research. Since 2005, Curing Kids Cancer has raised more than $26 million. Let me say that again, more than $26 million dollars. And uh, earlier this year, uh, my amazing wife, Emily, and I uh, had the honor and the pleasure of being with the Owen family as uh, the Gamecocks Curing Kids Cancer Clinic at the uh, Prisma Health Children's Hospital uh, was opened earlier this year here in Columbia. So that clinic's bringing the latest cutting-edge treatment uh, to children in the Midlands so we can find a cure for this awful, awful disease. You can find out more at curingkidscancer.org as well. So honored to uh, partner with this group as well and, and uh, wear this shirt today, something I'm very, uh, very, very uh, passionate about without a doubt. So um, uh, part of the reason I'm late, I was on a boat, but also was meeting with Clint Haggard. I want to give you guys the most thorough injury report that you guys deserve each and every week uh, as well. So I didn't want to miss anything. All of our guys are, I would say, in okay shape. Uh, A.B. did not practice today. Amari and Brown expecting to do a little bit tomorrow. Uh, I would say he's uh, questionable for this week. He was in good spirits at practice and, and doing some uh, stuff on the side. So he needs to be able to get out there and do a little bit in practice tomorrow. But he's not far off, and hopefully he will be uh, able to uh, without a doubt. And um, anyone else that was out from last week, uh, expect to get back this week. JT Gear did a little bit in practice today, so we're optimistic that he'll be able to do something on Saturday as well. He did practice a little bit today. Uh, Juice will be out this week. He will not be able to play. Uh, he did see a specialist this morning in Charlotte, and uh, uh, it was a good good visit as well. Nothing that is season-ending uh, is something that feel like the best thing is just to you know uh, rest it for this week. We'll see about next week for Tennessee, and then we have an open week after that so we'll certainly reevaluate things as we get more into into next week let's just let it let the foot settle down a little bit and see where we are and then we'll we'll go from there but uh disappointing that he disappointing for him because i know how he how hard he worked and then to get back and then was had a great week of practice but uh uh we'll continue to do what's best for him going forward but uh he won't be able to play this saturday and i think other than that am i missing anybody david Huh? Tyreek thinks should be good. Uh, he did a little bit in practice on Sunday, did some stuff today. Uh, we'll tr continue to try and progress him. So I, I would say that Tyreek and JT and AB are all questionable, but trending in the right direction. And uh, we got uh, we got that teleconference tomorrow uh, at 12, whatever. So I'll have a better idea. Then <clears throat> uh, need a full group as much as we can. A uh, really good team we have coming in here in Mississippi State. If you look at them, the last two football seasons, counting this season and last season, the only games they've lost are to Georgia, Alabama, LSU, and at Kentucky. Georgia, Alabama, LSU, and at Kentucky are the only teams they've lost to uh, since the end of the 2021 season and all of 22, obviously. So veteran group. 
Uh, if you look at them offensively, quarterback that's been there forever. Uh, defensively, the whole starting lineup is uh, basically seniors and graduates, except for one guy. Uh, it's a new head coach, obviously, and Coach Arnett, but they're running the same defense. So these guys have years and years of being in this system, and they're veteran guys that know what they're doing. Uh, disruptive D-line, uh, arguably the best linebacker tandem in the entire SEC. Uh, you look at their secondary, like this is a good looking team with, they have length in the secondary. They don't have five foot eight and five foot nine DBs running out there. They have six foot two long corners as well. Quarterback obviously is highly decorated and has had an amazing career, uh, Will has, and, and a, a really talented player. Big, beautiful looking offensive line, leading rusher in the SEC. So this isn't your mama's and dad's uh, air raid that uh, from a few years ago, this is like a new Mississippi state where they lead the, they want to run the football down your throat and they have a running back that can do it. They have a physical offensive line. They can do it. The running back is leading the SEC in rushing attempts, rushing yards and yards per game when they don't want to hand it off to him. They've got receivers on the outside that are dynamite. And then they've got, uh, from a special team standpoint, you know, arguably the best tandem of punt returner and kick returner in our conference uh, as well. So when you talk about seven at running back and then five at wide receiver and five as a kick returner, these guys are, uh, are dangerous. I know, uh, uh, had a tough day on Saturday against a really talented LSU team. And we know they will respond on Saturday. That's how this program was the, the, the DNA of the program there in Starkville, Coach Arnett in year one is doing a great job uh, taking over in the most tragic of situations that he did last season, putting his stamp on the program and doing a really good job <clears throat> with this team as well. Uh, it'll be a certainly an amazing uh, weekend, fun weekend from a personal standpoint. Many of you know I got my first full-time job in coaching at Mississippi State back in 2004. And uh, so the first time I was ever not a graduate assistant was actually getting paid to coach was at Mississippi State. Met my awesome wife there. Her, she's born and raised in Starkville, Mississippi State grad. Her parents still live in Starkville. Uh, so a big contingent of people from Mississippi that'll be in my house this weekend from what I've been told uh, with people coming to visit as well, her friends and, and family. A uh, place that will always be special to me because of the three years that I spent there working for Coach Kroom and, and the many great people and friends that I have there. And then now, you know, at Mississippi State, uh, getting to play them. Played them when I was an assistant coach here my first year at uh, at Carolina here in Columbia. Uh, that was a fun Saturday afternoon. And, and then even more ties. <clears throat> Their athletic director is one of my best friends in the world, Zach Selman. We work together at Oklahoma, and our families are – extremely close so it'll be fun seeing him as well and, and uh, it'll be Mississippi State's first away game this season as well and it'll also be my good friend Zach's first away game as an athletic director in the SEC so we certainly want to show him and all of Mississippi State what an SEC road game is like and we need that to be an advantage for us this Saturday night uh, in Columbia we know what a factor our crowd is we know how loud it'll be in there and we really 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 need to make it loud and uncomfortable on Saturday night for Mississippi State with it being their first true road game in a uh, new offensive system and things like that as well. So we need every advantage we can get, and our crowd is certainly one of them. Looking forward to an awesome night on Saturday. Questions? Shane, obviously losing juice is a big blow, but you guys were practicing without him a lot of the preseason and these first two games. So how prepared do you think the other receivers have already shown that they can take that spot and who else can step forward? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, we've had <clears throat> since the beginning of preseason practice, we've practiced more without juice than we have with juice, unfortunately. Uh, so certainly we just can't rod Xavier Leggett, you know, till he his legs fall off. I mean, we need other guys to step up and you saw Omega has done some nice things and and um did some things on Saturday with the tight end position with Trey and Josh. Need those guys to continue to come along. We've got to be able to run the ball better and then at the wide receiver position those other guys need to come along. We need to get A.B. back as well, you know, because if Juice doesn't play and A.B. doesn't play, that's technically two starting receivers that you're not playing with. Uh, Luke Doty needs to continue to come along. Eddie Lewis needs to continue to come along. We need to play Nicholas Harbour and Tyshawn Russell more, and we will. And uh, those guys, we got to throw them in there. I know I sound like a broken record, but, you know, uh, uh, we need to get those guys in there more, and, and that's been um, – 
Uh, our guys are, are aware of that. And, and they have to do their part as well, you know, these young receivers, making sure they know what to do and that we can count on, count on them when we put them in there also. Whether it's those young receivers or Tree at left tackle or uh, Jalen at safety, how's it been as, as you guys have seen – these young guys get on the field and, and seen it play out. Obviously, y'all y'all been expecting it, but now that you're living it, how how's this kind of gone for you so far? Um, stressful. I probably have more gray hair than what I had at the the beginning of the year when you're playing that many true freshmen. And you know, I walked off the practice field today, hail, and like right there in the training room, all at the same time as <clears throat> Juice. He was back from Charlotte. Jalen Nichols, Casey Henry, and Marquis Anderson are all sitting right there getting treatment together. And it's like, God almighty, I mean, there's four guys on our offense that could potentially have been starters for us this season. And a couple of them will get back and all that as well. But it's been tough with the injuries and then getting those young guys in there. From that standpoint, be it the depth, but seeing them get in there and perform has been pretty cool. Uh, one for them because they're great young men, and you guys have heard me say it before, just everything they've done since they got here, whether they came in January or whether they got here in the summertime, they're professional, they're doing great in school. We meet on academics every Thursday. Last sat- or last Thursday's academic meeting was was couldn't have been better with all the freshmen uh, with what they're doing. So they're handling their business off the field, they're handling their business on the field. I just we were talking about it as a staff yesterday. I mean, these are young kids. I mean, we got nine regular season games left. And last year at this time, with some of these guys, all these guys that were in high school, some of them had about four or five games left in their whole season. And we're not even a third of the way through the the uh, the year. So we've got to continue to help them on and off the field, bringing them along. But to see them get in there and have success, for Tree to be able to go in that environment Saturday as a left tackle, true freshman in the SEC, playing the defending two-time national champion Georgia Bulldogs and perform and have fun like he did was pretty cool to see. And and all those guys, Jalen and Nick and Pup and Trevon will continue to play more and on and on and on. So it's a good group and excited for the future, excited for 2023, but excited for these guys as we continue to go forward and, and also the – you know, the the guys that are seniors in high school right now that are a part of this stellar recruiting class that we have committed when they get here next year also. You know, we're recruiting really solid people, and it shows on the field. Shane, I know some people and some coaches will roll their eyes when you talk about time possession, but with how thin you guys are on defense, and especially not being able to get the run game going, how important is it to be able to get the run game going to be complimentary to your defense? It's important. You know, it's something that even going back last week, Mike, I mean, I had conversations with with Dow and Clayton, like, how do we how do we play this game? You know, obviously we don't have the depth or last Saturday didn't have the depth at certain positions that we needed. And I knew the longer the game went, our whole thing was just get this thing to the fourth quarter and have a chance to win it. And we did get it to the fourth quarter, but you also, you can't play like turn it into the <clears throat> turn into, you know, one of the service academies where you're just grinding the clock and you're trying to snap it with two seconds on the play clock and you're just running the ball 60 times and all that as well. Like we have a quarterback and we want to give him a chance to score points. And that's really what we did. I mean, you watch the first drive. It wasn't like slow it down. It was here we go and be aggressive and attack. And that's how we want to play football. Because at the end of the day, you're right. I think the time of possession is I think it could be good. At the end of the day, you do what you got to do to score points. But we certainly have to help our defense. One – Defense has got to get off the field on third down. Two, we've got to stay on the field offensively on third down. But then three, we've got to play other players on defense because we can't ask Debo and Stone to play 80 plays every game at linebacker. Uh, We can't ask uh, Marcellus, O'Donnell, uh, Jalen, DQ, and Nick to play every play at safety and or corner and nickel. We've got to continue to develop depth where if they are out there for 70, 80 plays, we don't get worn down because we're we're playing these young guys and, and that's what we have to continue to do. Yeah, you mentioned Rattler. Obviously, he came in and he said that the run game is kind of probably the next step to get this offense a bit more fleshed out. Obviously, George is a unique situation, but just how much emphasis are you placing on figuring out that run game, if only to open up the pass game a bit more down the field with it? Yeah, it's critical, um, you know, to help the passing game and, and – you know, next door in that team meeting room, I mean, the number one goal on our board is run the ball and stop the run as far as what we want to do each and every week. And and uh, we've got to do a better job uh, of it. 
And don't get me wrong, I mean, we're going to do what we have to do to win football games every single week. And if that means throwing it 50 times and running it 10, then that's what we'll do. You do whatever you got to do uh, to win the game. But we certainly have to get that running game on track. I feel like we've got good running backs. We're continuing to get better on the offensive line. Um, and and I love running the football. I was an old running back, some tight ends coach when I was coaching offense. So I'm all for it. And, and uh, you know, confident that we uh, confident that we will. It's easier said than done. I mean, this group that we're playing this weekend is really disruptive up front, and their whole mo on defense is make it really hard on you to run the football with what they do schematically uh, as well. But we've got to, you know, we've talked about it as a staff. We've got to, you know give our guys a chance to get the run game going and, and uh, you know, confident that we will to, one, help the defense, to help the passing game. Shane, as you're talking over with the coaches and you watch the video and analyze everything, have you been able to determine what is the key factor in getting the running game going? Um, well, I think a couple of things, or a lot of things. One, I mean, we had a lot of called runs on Saturday that were RPOs, meaning if the box isn't favorable for us to hand the ball off, we're going to not hand it off and we're going to throw it. And first play of the game out there to Luke on Saturday. I mean, that was a called run that just the look they gave us, we're going to throw it out there every time. So we're not going to get, you know, there's times where you just want to say, let's call a run and hand it off no matter what. But we also want to make sure that we're running into favorable looks without a doubt as well. So, um, you know, one, be consistent from that standpoint. And Spencer made the right decisions on Saturday as far as when to hand it, when to not hand it. He did a good job from that standpoint. But we certainly got to have some runs that we just call and just run the football as well. And it's not a RPO uh, uh, with RPO decision that the quarterback has to make. Two, we've got to be in every coach in America sit it. And I've probably said it a million times, too. When you're talking about five offensive linemen in the run game, one guy can be off and it can be the difference in a 10-yard run or a two-yard loss. So we've just – the continuity on the offensive line, to me, has to continue to come along where we're successful from that standpoint. And, um, and two, when we do hand the ball off, we got to break some tackles and make some people miss. And, I, I mean, I, I told our running backs that after practice today. They want to run the ball more than anybody, but, you know, I'm – uh, I don't want to see us. We hand the ball off and we're getting tackled by the first time one on one in the open field or one on one by a linebacker or a safety. Like we got to break some tackles as well and and be able to keep the chains moving. And then the other thing, I think I'm giving you four things now, Rick. The other one would just be staying ahead of the chains. I mean, we had some running plays called on Saturday where it's first and ten, and next thing you know, we got a false start or something, and now we're backing up and it's first and fifteen, and and it just kind of changes how Dow and uh, our offensive staff are calling the game too. So I know I threw a lot at you, but basically just play better, coach better. How about that? <laughs> Shane, to take you back to Mississippi State for a second, you were also recruiting coordinator when you started there. So, I mean, just how different is recruiting now <laughs> as a job from what it was in 2004? And is there anything you kind of learned from that position that you feel like you still use? Yeah, I mean, it's so different. I laugh. I laugh all the time now, Emily, like back then you went out on the road recruiting and I can remember sitting in my office on MapQuest and some of you guys may not even remember, no MapQuest, but you got on MapQuest and you like typed in the directions, okay, I'm going to be at this high school and from that high school, I'm going to this high school and you just type it in and print it out and you're like, okay, thank God, or hopefully this is right because if it's not, I'm in the middle of Mississippi and have nowhere to go. So just the technology has changed. Back then you didn't, you know... Now, if somebody tells me that Joe Lyle is a fantastic recruit, I can pull up his name on my phone and watch his video in five seconds, which he was and what is still. Back then, I mean, you had to put a DVD or VHS tape in the mail, send it to the high school coach. He had to mail it back back to you. So just the technology is just so much different. I know I'm dating myself, but it really was, I guess, 20 years ago <clears throat> as well. Um, but it, there's a lot of lessons, just the relationships that you have to develop with people. Uh, I had never gone on the road recruiting in my life at that point because I had been a graduate assistant for four years. And as a GA, you're not allowed to go out on the road recruiting. So the first time I ever went into a high school uh, was at Mississippi State. And you're just kind of learning, learning as you go. And thankfully, I had some veteran coaches on that staff to – to help me. I remember the first time I'll never forget, like the first school I ever went into was Hazelhurst high school in uh, Mississippi. That was going to be my first stop Monday morning on the road recruiting. And 
get in the car Sunday, drive from Starkville, and I just assume that I'm just going to get to Hazelhurst and just, like, find a hotel. And there's no hotels in Hazelhurst, you know. So Hazelhurst is south of Jackson but north of, like, Brookhaven and some of these other places in Mississippi. So it taught me, you know what, you better have a – plan like where you're going to stay and not just type out the directions on map quest but make sure you know where you're staying and how you're getting places and, and and plan better so it forced me to force me to do all that as well you know so i love like when i'm on the road recruiting now and i just type in a school pull it up on my phone it takes me right to it back then you literally had to like I mean, it was a process of typing out directions and pray to god there's not like road construction or something and you have to detour Nothing more stressful, by the way, than being a kid having to read out the map quest directions <laughs> to your parent next to you. Yeah. <laughs> you speak from experience. Huh? A little bit there. Um, <laughs> this offense, especially in the passing game, has been really explosive through the first three games. Yeah. What's next for it when those chunk <clears throat> plays aren't coming? What would you like to see more from this offense as a whole when you aren't getting those those long passes downfield? Yeah, it's obviously the running game, being able to lean on that a little bit more and run the football. I mean, there's nothing more fun as a coach to watch than you're able when you're able to line up and run the football and the other team has a hard time stopping you. Like that's an awesome feeling on the sidelines. So we want to we want to get to that. And then just from a passing game standpoint, I'd say two things continuing to get other people, you know, involved, which I think we've done a good job of. I mean, we've thrown to the tight ends. We've thrown to the other receivers. And then just schematically, you know, maybe just the the details of stuff. You know, you see some guys out there doing some really good things, but just the details of some of the stuff uh, from Saturday, uh, we need we really need to get clean up, cleaned up, and I think we can be even more efficient. You know, the little – Pass to Trey Knox over on our sideline, going towards our um, our uh, fan section on Saturday. I mean, Trey was right, but where the other re- receivers were on that play was not right, and I think it would, probably would have been the difference in us completing that ball and maybe not completing that ball, or some of the things with just depth of routes, or you're we're running a crossing route, are you supposed to go under the linebackers or over the linebackers? Just details like that that were just a little a little too sloppy for us on Saturday that is we get that cleaned up and even more honed in. I think we can continue to be even more efficient and explosive in the passing game. Going back to Joe Lyle's position group for a second here, spe- special teams, you've mentioned some things need to be better there, some more game-breaking plays. Is that personnel? Is that execution? What do you point to trying to stim- stimulate the special teams group? Yeah, I would say all of that. Um you know, we've been good in some areas. I mean, you guys want to have fun. Watch Xavier Leggett cover punts. I mean, the guy's a – we know what he is, a receiver. I mean, people can't block him when he's trying to cover a punt. He's just a weapon for us from that standpoint. So, you know, it'll be – like I said, it'll be a big challenge this week as well. Um, I think a little bit of it is is personnel because when you have – injuries like we've had when you're having to play players like Stone and Debo a lot or Xavier Leggett a lot they're limited on what they can do on special teams so because of that now you're playing uh, some younger guys and and they're in special teams roles so they're going to continue to get better but you know most of our freshman class I'm guessing did not play on the kickoff team at their high school and they're learning those techniques or they didn't play on the punt block team or whatever it might be. So they're learning those things. And then a lot of it certainly is, uh, is, uh, you know, schematics. And, and again, we've, we've done some good things. We've been, uh, we've been close on some big plays, but then we haven't been as, uh, as efficient as I would, you know, like for us to be it just hasn't been very, hasn't been very clean and uh, that starts with us as coaches and and we certainly need to need to get that going because that's been a weapon for us and will continue to be what message have you conveyed to your team regarding the importance of this game and its potential impact on the season nothing beyond this week I mean we're not we don't talk anything beyond this week told the team this morning that it's you know we've played three games we have a pretty good understanding of where we are right now, what our strengths are, where we need to improve, and uh, and then that we're essentially we're a third, fourth of the way through the season. So this is basically we're starting the second quarter, and uh, everything that we want is still out there in front of us, and we just need to worry about getting better this week. We haven't talked anything beyond beyond this week um, at all. It's uh, what do we have to do to get better right now, 
the focus on the, this moment today, and uh, we'll worry about tomorrow or tomorrow and, and uh, making sure our guys understand what a quality team we have coming in here and, and uh, that we're going to have to really play well this week. Coach, we had Tree and Trevon Bow both bought in here earlier. They seem like a pretty dynamic duo. Walk me through what you've seen from them both on and off the field. Uh, I saw your pick for the game on Saturday, too. Much respect for being willing to do that. I think you and Kendall were the two that, that went did that, that. You were close. I appreciate that. Tree and Trevon, they're, uh, you guys saw it on when, if they were in here what they're about. I mean, they're just, uh, they're great young men. They're just fun personalities. They work really, really hard. They're easy to pull for. They're easy for their teammates to want to help because there's no ego. It's just a work ethic and, and try and get better. I mean, tree is tree is hilarious. Um, just a really just awesome personality. Uh, as well never know what he's gonna say and then Trevon is just all business and just very uh, uh, not wise beyond his years but there's just a great maturity about him and uh, goes back to what I said about the rest, rest of the freshman class and how they're handling things off the field and it shows on the field as well you know credit to them because what they did on Saturday is is uh, not easy to say the least <laughs> Dowell mentioned last week that you'll have to see some things in practice to know that a freshman is ready to go out there and start. What, what for you are some indicators that a, a freshman is ready to, to get out there in, in a starting role like Tree was last week? And, and to that end, do you think Trevon will be ready this week? Do you envision him starting at right guard? Yeah, we'll see as how the week goes and, you know, whether it's Trevon or Ja'Kai or somebody else, depending on what we do at guard, we got equal confidence in both those guys for sure. Um, Trevon's definitely going to play and – and uh, and and is gonna is a is a really good player for us. As far as practice, to me, it's just the uh, I for me personally, I want to see just the competitive spirit, you know, play in, play out of going up against our defense and, and competing and and a focus. There's not a bunch. There's not a silliness. There's not like the young freshman antics that you're you're focused on, on what you have to do, the the job at hand, and then just being able to execute. Like you can live with. You can live with some of the mistakes knowing that they're freshmen, but uh, just understanding how to get lined up and 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 uh, not have a lot of self-inflicted mistakes. You know, we had too much of that on Saturday with older guys, whether it be false starts on offense or, you know, personnel issue on defense or whatever it might be. But for me personally, I can't speak for Dow, but that's what I want to see is just a consistency of performance um, uh, day in, day out. Yeah, Shane, Alshon's getting his jersey retired on yeah. Saturday. Just one, how important was it for you to make sure that that happened? And then two, what were some of your memories from recruiting him back in the day? Yeah, very important. Thankful to, you know, Coach Tanner. I didn't know until Coach Tanner t called and told me they were going to do that for him. Uh, now I would have been the first one jumping on the table for Alshon if I had a say in it. But Coach Tanner <clears throat> called me earlier this year and, and told me they were doing that. And, man, I was so happy to hear that. It was a really cool moment when, you know, Coach Tanner and I got on the phone with Alshon, the three of us on the phone at the same time, and I was able to tell Alshon that news. It was pretty cool, you know, just thinking about when he was 17 years old and I was recruiting him out of St. Matthew, South Carolina. And then fast forward to 2023, and here I am telling this young man that, uh, his jersey is going to be retired was a really, really, really cool moment uh, for me. And, and just hearing how grateful he was on that call is a phone call I'll never forget without a doubt. And then stories, man. Um, you know, I remember being on my back porch at my house, my old house in Columbia, when they gave me the news that he was committing to the other, the wrong USC, and uh, thinking to myself, how crushed I was to hear that, but then thinking that, you know, I'm not going to this, I'm not going to let that happen. And just the amount of time I spent not trying to pressure him to change his mind, but just continuing to sell South Carolina and let it just kind of happen. And there was a lot of time that went into it. Uh, I remember the night before signing day, signing day, at, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. on literally signing day, being on the phone with him, content, st still talking about stuff jersey numbers whatever it might be we were on the phone that night late 
and uh, just so thankful that he had trust in us and, and just what a fantastic person he is. I mean, I think I told you guys he called me a few weeks ago just to ask about Juice and Leggett and some of the freshman receivers or – Every time I talk to him, he asks about Emily and my kids and all that as well. So somebody that I love deeply and so excited for him and, and can't wait to see him this weekend. There you go. Well, good plug there. Good plug. Yep, went through some old highlights. Uh, during that process of talking to Alshon, did you have to overcome any comments from another coach in the SEC about future <laughs> professions if he – Came to South Carolina. I worried about us um, and what we were recruiting doing here at South Carolina, and let all that other stuff, you know, take care of take care of itself. We had enough to sell about South Carolina and what he did, the decision he made, and and uh, what he did once he made that decision here at Carolina speaks for itself. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you, guys.